Thank you for taking the time out. Praise God for joining us this morning. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Please share this live broadcast. Please share it. Share it with your mother. Wait, call somebody. Wake them up. Tell them shallow in the building. Come on, church. Praise God. We're going to magnify. We're going to glorify. Hallelujah. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus. Praise God. God loves you. You are the apple of God's eyes. Praise God. Come on, music ministry. Come on, music ministry. Come on, Adrian, Richard, and Larry, and Jay. Come on. Take us home. Praise God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Once again, this is the day that our God has made. We've come to rejoice and to be glad in this day. We just want to take a moment and invite the presence of the Lord into the house. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Have your Right now, right where you are, lift your hands and say, Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Have your way. Amen. God, you
you are truly welcome in this place. Amen. Please join us as we do our call to worship. And we're coming from the 100 number of Psalm. Hallelujah. And it reads, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. Hallelujah. And his mercy endureth to all generations. Glory to God. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord God, God, we thank you. We praise you, Father God, for this day, God. This is the day that you've made, God, and we will rejoice and be glad in it, dear Lord. Glory to your holy name, God. God, we will praise you. We will magnify you, God. God, we will praise your holy name, God, in the sanctuary. We will praise you, God, for the firmament of your power. We will praise you, God, hallelujah, with the trumpet and with the loud cymbals. Praise God. Hallelujah. God, we ask God that you continue, God, to bless us, God, and watch over us and keep us, dear Lord. Help us, Father God, to be ye steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in your work, Father God. God, we ask that you heal the land, God. Not only do you heal the land, dear Lord, but we ask God that you heal, Father God, us mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Father God, we ask God that you heal immune systems, neurological systems, respiratory systems, digestive systems, muscular systems. God, we ask that you make us whole right now, God. We ask, dear Lord, that you bless, dear Lord, Hallelujah, our, income, our incoming president, dear Lord, and the current president, Father God. We ask God that you give them both wisdom, knowledge. We ask that they come together for a smooth, hallelujah, executive transition, dear Lord. God, please bless our pastor on today, God. Bless him in a mighty way, God. Help him, Father God, to put one foot forward and walk by faith and not by sight, dear Lord. We thank you, God, for his leadership. We ask God that you bless his wife, dear Lord. Help her, God, to be a phenomenal help me, God. Help them to cleave and weave and never leave one another, Father God. What you, you said, God, what you put together, let no man separate. God, we ask God that you bless our ministry, God. Continue to give us fresh revelation knowledge, fresh ideas, fresh approaches to ministry, dear Lord. Thank you, God, for the paradigm shift that you've caused, God, and in, in not only ministry, our church, but throughout the world, Father God. Thank you, God, for allowing us, God, to think differently, God, as it relates to encouraging your people. We honor you, Father God. We admire you. We adore you. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, Father God, we pray. Thank God and amen. Come on, type in that comment section. Amen. Amen. Come on. Clap your hands. Put your hands together. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to see you all on today. Come on, type good morning in the screen. Let us know that you're here with us. We just want to remind you once again to share our worship experience with your brothers and your sisters, especially those that may still be asleep. The Shiloh family, the man I've woke up yet share our worship experience that they may join in. Uh, we're blessed to have a special guest with us on today. My sister is here, Trina Robinson. She's going to lead us further in worship. So um, buckle up your seatbelts. Let's go. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. If you're laying in your bed or if you're sitting there having a cup of coffee, put those hands together because this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, we give God glory and honor this morning. He came to lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, he's been good all week long. This is the 
today. Mm-hmm, yes. Mm-hmm, this is the day.
I, I get a little caught up when I talk about Jesus. But it's for his glory. But it's for his glory. Anybody out there know that it's for his glory? That he keeps us. It's for his glory that we give him glory. It's for his glory that we give him praise. I got to calm down. I'm going to calm down, y'all. I'm going to calm down, y'all. I'm going to sing one more song, and then I'm going to go on to my seat. But it's something about the goodness of the Lord. We want to reverence his presence in this house because it's for his glory. He gets the glory. There are people that are grieving. There are people that are going without jobs, with finances, but we still give him glory because he told us in all things to give him thanks Lord if I find favor in your sight Lord please hear my I'm desperately waiting to be where you are, Lord. I've crossed the hard test desert. I've traveled near over, and it's for Gotta be where 
you are. Oh, I give you praise. Wanna be where you are. Yes, Jesus. Gotta be where you are. For your glory, I would do anything just to see you, Jesus. Just to see you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Just to see you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Lord. Just to see you, Jesus. People are dying everywhere, but I want to see you. I want to see you. People are crying everywhere, but I want to see you, Jesus. saying when you're moaning. That's why I like that part of that song right there. Can I tell the devil some more stuff? All right, for this week that's coming. Oh, devil don't know what I'm talking about.
seal it with a praise. Come on, help me praise the Lord for Trina Robinson. Fantastic job. God bless you. God bless you. Awesome singer. Blessed our souls with both of those songs and her gift of ministry and song. We are so grateful this morning. Listen, I understand that's a battle cry, isn't it, Adrian? Come on, Adrian, lead us in it. That's a battle cry. Hold on, Adrian, just a minute. Because I believe that there may be somebody that's watching this broadcast that's in battle with something. Here is what you need to understand. The Bible tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You ain't fighting nobody, but you are fighting spirits. The Bible says that we fight against principalities and, and powers and spiritual wickedness. And so you may be fighting something. Maybe it's financial. Maybe it's health related. Maybe it's attitudes. Maybe it's, it's personalities. Maybe it's conflict. Maybe it's the pandemic itself. Maybe it's political warfare. I don't know what it is, but here's what I can tell you. That if you sing victory now, you don't have to wait for victory. You can, listen, I heard somebody say it this way. Don't, don't shout when the battle is over, but shout now, even in the midst of your warfare, because the God that you know and the God that you serve is able to stick in there with you and to bring you through whatever you're going through. Come on, Adrian. Come on, Adrian. Come on, Adrian. Come on, right where you are. Let's just lift the war cry. Whoa. discouraged sometimes just lifting your voice and lifting your praise can bring about a change a shift in the atmosphere that's what we're working on even this morning I dare you to put your hands together and praise the Lord right where you are I dare you to do it 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 I dare you to give him praise like you're at church Hallelujah. That's the highest praise. Hallelujah. Praise is not about a geographic location. It's about God present in your heart, in your spirit, in your soul. You can have church anywhere when you realize that you are the church and that the church lives in you. Come on, help me pray. Precious God, we are grateful for this day. 
We're grateful for your richest blessings of life and health and strength. Grateful for you enabling us this morning to dress ourselves, to clothe ourselves, to feed ourselves, to bathe ourselves, and to spend time with you and to spend time with our fellow worshipers. Even though we are virtual in our connection, we're connected nonetheless. We're connected to each other and we're connected to you. We are the body of Christ and members in particular. And now have your way in this worship experience. Take over, take control. Completely provide for us a word like fresh manna from heaven. Give us what we need, especially in this hour. Speak to our hearts, speak to our minds, speak to our souls, speak life into us. Breathe upon us with a fresh word. Let your Holy Spirit allow it to germinate, to take root, and to manifest blessings not only in our lives, but in the lives of those we touch and we encounter. Do it now in the name of Jesus, and we'll be ever careful to give you praise, honor, and glory, knowing that every time we receive the blessing, and we ask it in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus the Christ, the Father, and the Holy Ghost, and every heart said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Listen, I can't go another further without, first of all, acknowledging the tremendous blessing Robert Edwards has been to the Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church. And by now, many of you know the sad news that our brother, and I used to call him our patriarch on so many levels, one of our greatest pillars, our covering. Robert made his transition on this week, and we were saddened to receive the news. Got a call from Quinn and from his wife, Deborah, and I want you to continue to lift them up in our prayers. They're probably watching this morning. I uh, want you to know, boy, we love you. We appreciate you. And we are so grateful that God continues to cover you even in this moment. Deborah, if you're tuning in, and you probably are, because you already know that we're talking about your guy. And we want to thank the Lord for strengthening you all these years for being the person that you have been in his life and for the, the undying support and strength that you have yielded to him, especially in his greatest times of needs. Hats off to you. Our prayers and love go with you on this today and all through this week as you prepare to make arrangements. And to the Shiloh family, those of you who are grieving, we know there's so many of you that are grieving because of this giant who's made his transition. I am grateful for Pastor Salisbury, Deborah's pastor, who said it this way, that our grieving doesn't have to be significantly tremendous because we already know. We already know that he knew the Lord. We already know that he loved the Lord and that he loved his church. We already know that God has blessed him and that now he has the opportunity to have a front row seat in front of the master's throne. That's great news for us. That's much for us to celebrate. That's much for us to give thanks and praise and honor and glory for. And so we mourn not as those who don't believe and don't believe that he didn't believe, but we mourn with adoration. We mourn with glory. We, we mourn with celebration, giving thanks to the fact that He's no longer suffering the ills and the problems of this world, but that all pain has subsided and all things are great in his eternal life. And we thank God for it even today. Listen, I also want to encourage you to pray for my family. Uh, we lost the matriarch, the last, the last blood relative uh, in my family from the previous generation. My aunt passed away Thursday morning. Robert passed away Thursday night. And so we're holding my family, the family of Evan Cavan 
Evan Caven, Evelyn Caven, Evelyn Cavan. We pronounce it both ways. Uh, my uncle passed away about a year ago, and uh, she made her transition. Uh, my, my cousin was there, told me that she was able to breathe her life out sweetly. And so here I am representing now the elder generation of my family. So keep us in prayer as we endeavor to make all things make sense in these days and times. And many of you who've been through situations like this know exactly what I'm talking about when I make this statement. In spite of all of what I just shared, God is still in control. And we have a whole lot to thank the Lord for and to praise him for. So we give glory and honor to his name. Listen, turn with me to the book of Galatians. The book of Galatians, chapter 5. I want to read two verses, verses 22 and 23. Thank the Lord for all of you who are here in the building with me. Uh, good to see my brother Mike. Good to see Mike Moreland. Good to see the band. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all so much. Always. Every week. Alan, thank you so much, man, for just doing what you do and helping us to make this thing work. Uh, to my oldest friend, our only Caucasian member, <laughs> uh, Winston Bud McGill. Bud got us on not only Facebook Live, but he created for us, y'all, a YouTube page. I've been waiting for this for quite some time. And so in the next few weeks, we are going to transition from Facebook Live only to YouTube. And you can go to our YouTube page now. We would ask our members and our friends to subscribe when you get to the page. It's uh, Shiloh MB Church. Shiloh MB Church. That's on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube, if you got the app, you download that or you go on your television, you can pull up YouTube. And when you get up, when you get YouTube up, in the search engine, when you get to the search part of the icon, just put in Shiloh space MB space church and Shiloh will come up. You'll see our logo there and then just click on something that you see and you can go to the subscribe button and make sure that you just subscribe because once we get to a thousand subscribers, then we have the ability to have you watch live from YouTube, which means that many of our seniors, y'all, can watch even as we're on and broadcasting through their televisions. Won't need computers, won't need special phones, but they'll be able to just watch from their televisions. I'm excited about this because I think it's going to give us the ability and the privilege to reach so many more people. And so thanks to those who work to make that happen, Pastor Lance, Pastor Renee, I see y'all doing dynamic stuff in the ministry. And, uh, you know, at some point, Mike, maybe next week, what we'll do, I want Mike and Pastor Renee and Pastor Lance to come and to share with y'all the great things that are happening through the government-funded support and the programs that we have emulating from our church, even in the midst of the pandemic. So y'all be ready to do that next week. All right? All right. Edward Scissorhands, great to see you, brother. You got Galatians 5? Galatians 5. I just want to read two verses into your hearing. Verses 22 and 23. And this is what it says. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and the last one is temperance. Against such, there is no law. Against such, there is no law. This week, I want to talk from this subject. God must be making fruit. Shake somebody's hand and repeat the words of our topic. If somebody's in the house with you, tell them, no, well, if they're in the house with you, you're safe. You can shake their hand. Tell them God must be making fruit. If you can, put it in the comment section. God 
must be making fruit. If you're in the church, look at somebody close to you. Don't touch them. Don't touch them. Keep your mask on. Tell them God must be making fruit. Yeah, he is. Listen, the Bible makes a distinction between gifts and fruit. Now, the Bible makes reference, Mike, to gifts nearly 90 times in Scripture. And when it speaks of gifts, sometimes it speaks specifically about spiritual gifts. It speaks about uh, there being gifts that men give to men or mankind gives to mankind. I'm not trying to be sexist here. Women give gifts to women and men and kids and all of that. It's the gifts that we give to each other. And then the Bible speaks about God giving us gifts. And then finally, it speaks about us giving gifts to God. Oftentimes, we refer to those as offerings. And here's the thing. Uh, a gift to God, according to one biblical source in a dictionary, uh, is said to be or considered a power. Of when God gives us a gift, rather, then God is giving us a power or bestowing upon us something that is either natural or supernatural. And when he does it, he does it for the purpose of serving him. Let me read it how it's written. Um, when God gives us a gift, it is considered a power or it's bestowed naturally or supernaturally for the purpose of serving God. So listen, whether you believe that there are five different types of gifts or seven different types of gifts or 12 different types of gifts or 16 different types of gifts, the truth of the matter is whatever or however many gifts you can conjure in your mind, spiritual or otherwise, all gifts come from God. Let me hear the church say all gifts come from God. And the one major difference between gifts and fruit is that gifts are given, but fruit is produced. Uh-huh, you can write that down. Gifts are given, but fruit is produced. That's why it's important for us to understand that when gifts are given to us by God, that the gifts that God gives us are not for us. He's not just trying to have us glorify ourselves or bask in the gift that he's given us. Uh, when you got a gift like Sister Robinson and you can sing like she does, that gift is not meant just to cause her to shout herself. Come on, y'all. Y'all know, you, you've seen these folks in church, haven't you? You've seen folks that uh, when they start singing in church, singing gets so good to them, they shout. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Jason, you know what I'm talking about. And, and, it, and it's, it never fails. Every time they get up to sing, and they don't get up to sing much, but every time they get up to sing, they shout when they sing. Don't shout when nobody else sings. This ain't in my notes. The Holy Ghost just gave me this one. Don't shout no other time in church except when they sing. That reminds me of somebody who might feel like the gift that they've been given is just for them to enjoy. You need to understand that if you have a gift that God has given you, God has given you the gift not just for you, even though if he's given you a gift, it will benefit you. 
The gift is really for the body of Christ. The gift is really for the sinner that needs to be saved. So part of the problem with folks who receive gifts from God is that we want to treat gifts like birthday gifts. What are you talking about, Pastor? Well, uh, when we get a gift from God, we want to open it when we're ready to open it and then use it when we feel like using it. If you're not careful to God, the gift that God has given you, he can take that gift away from you. That ain't in my notes either, but I remember how my parents were around Christmas or birthday time. Because if I didn't appreciate the gifts they would give me, they would tell me, well, if you don't like that gift, I can take that gift and give it to somebody else who might appreciate it a little bit more than you do. And then all of a sudden, I got a spirit of gratitude. It was birthed in me instantaneously. All of a sudden, I came to appreciate and value Adrian, the gift that I was given. Do me a favor. Those of you who are in the house, turn to somebody and tell them, don't sit on your gift. Don't sit. Put that in your comments. Don't sit on your gift. If God has given you a gift, don't treat it like a birthday present. <laughs> That's also why when we get gifts, um, we got to be careful of wanting to flaunt our gifts. Y'all know what I mean when I say that, don't you? You know, some people wear their gifts like trophies. Uh-huh. Some people wear their gifts like special anointings that cause them to be better than other folks. Some of us uh, treat our gifts as if we received them because either we're special or we did something special. Uh-huh. Just because 95% of the world sings better than me doesn't mean you are better than me. I need y'all to hear what I'm saying. Here's the reality. You got some gifts, and I've got some gifts. And if you go to Corinthians, the 12th chapter, what it tells us is that God assigned us gifts based upon his desire and positioned us strategically in the body of Christ to use the gifts that he's given us, Richard, for the purpose of glorifying him, edifying the church, and using it in a way that allows his will and his purpose to manifest not only in our lives, but in the lives of those we encounter. So our gifts don't make us better than anybody. And just because you don't have the gift that somebody else has doesn't make you worse than anybody. Whenever we receive a gift, what we have to realize is we didn't do anything extra or special to deserve the gift we received. It's just like your birthday. You know, when you get gifts on your birthday, you really don't deserve them. No, I meant what I said. If anybody deserves a gift, your mama's the one that should get the gift. You didn't do nothing to get here. You didn't help. <laughs> she did all the pushing. All you did was showed up. And then every year when your birthday comes, you got your hands out like you deserve a gift. And if folk don't give you a gift, then you withdraw your hands and poke out your lips. Come on, y'all. <laughs> I must be talking to somebody, Larry. I need y'all to help me. Put in the comment section, you didn't do nothing for 
a birthday gift. Your mama should get the gift. Uh huh. Whenever you receive a gift from the Lord, realize you didn't deserve it. And even if you worked to enhance the gift, Richard and Adrian, they're gifted. Oh my God. Larry is gifted. I played the drums. Why y'all laughing? I don't play the drums like Jason. Jason is gifted. If I started playing the drums, somebody would say, where is Jason? <laughs> oh, my God. And these guys can tell you, even if you enhance your gift, the gift that you were given, what you have to understand is that your ability to enhance your, your gift, it still requires the Lord's involvement. I don't care how much work you do, right, bud? I don't care how much time you put in to practice. I don't care how much you tweet. I don't care how much. Listen, uh, you can't lift a finger without the Lord's permission. Are y'all hearing me? Uh, if you don't believe me, mess around and try to wake yourself up tomorrow morning. I dare you. Tomorrow morning, Try to get up without the Lord's help and see how that goes. See how that works out for you. Because of that, we ought to thank the Lord. We woke up this morning. Right now, as a matter of fact, you ought to stop and praise the Lord because you didn't wake yourself up. No, he woke me up this morning, started me on my way. And then understand that all of us have received at least one gift that is the same gift. Everybody in here, everybody on Facebook, everybody that hears me, everybody that's under the sound of my voice, everybody has received at least one gift that is the same gift. What are you talking about, preacher? John 3.16 makes it clear for God. So love the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God gave us all the same gift. We call his name Jesus. Uh-huh. And we get ready in a couple of weeks, few weeks to celebrate the gift called Jesus. Folks have already started putting up Christmas presents. But I'm concerned because I saw a commercial just a couple of days ago that I felt like was taking Jesus out of the joy. You know, we sing the song, Joy to the World, the Lord has come. Um, and I was look, looking at television the other day and a, and a commercial came on and they started singing Joy to the World. But they didn't sing joy to the world, the Lord has come. Uh, you know, it was a Christmas commercial. But they started singing joy to the world, all the boys and girls. Joy to the fishes in the deep blue sea. Joy to you. And I said, oh, my God, what have we done to Christmas? Y'all, you, you going to see it reminded me that the reason for this season is Jesus the Christ. Then Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 backs it up. Says, uh, for by grace are ye saved. Through faith, and get this, not of yourselves. Pastor Renee, in other words, we didn't do nothing to get the gift of grace. Um, and then, uh, Paul says in Ephesians, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You ain't got no business boasting about your gifts. You ain't got no business 
flaunting your gifts. As a matter of fact, because God has given us all the same gift, we ought to shout like we got some spiritual sense. Oh my God. Thank you. But I need y'all to know the gifts don't make us better than each other. But when we get gifts, gifts make us better. And even if you're blessed with one or two gifts, it's important for us to figure out how do we esteem the body of Christ. Not for our own self-glory, but to glorify God. That's what Paul is trying to remind us. Especially in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, because he talks about the different kinds of gifts. He mentions the gift of prophecy. He mentions the gift of tongues. And he says, when you consider all of these gifts, the greatest of all of them is the gift of love. And y'all know that we have a responsibility even to love one another. But I want to shift from gifts to fruit because here's what I really came to talk about. I really wanted us to focus on fruit. I just wanted to make the distinction between gifts and fruit. So can I talk about fruit for just a few minutes? Let me talk about fruit. I'm almost at my time. I won't be much longer, I promise you. Now I told you that there's a distinction between gifts and fruit. Uh, gifts are given to us, but fruit is produced in us. Now what that implies when we share that statement, Adrian, that fruit is produced in us is that in order for fruit to be produced, there's some work required. Put that in the comment section. In order for fruit to be produced, there's some work required. Fruit won't manifest without some work. And the work that produces fruit often involves some challenges, some struggle. Um, now, we don't have time to go into all nine of the fruits. I'm sure that's what y'all were afraid of. Some of y'all were reading and saying, man, there's nine fruits. <laughs> man, I sure hope, I hope Pastor ain't about it to cover all nine of these fruits because <laughs> we're going to be here all day. <laughs> Don't check out on me. I'm only going to do one. I only want to focus on the fourth one. And the fourth one is long-suffering. And that fruit is also known as the fruit of patience. In some translations, you see it as the fruit of patience. James also picks up on this particular fruit when you read James 1, because he tells us, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the, the trying of your faith worketh patience. And then he says, let patience have its perfect work, because when it does, then you'll be perfect. That's what James says as it relates to this particular fruit. There's a reason why I wanted to talk about this particular fruit, because this type of fruit requires a special kind of work. Now, if my brother was here, my brother would say, I'm, um, I'm preaching this message because I want us to focus on what's being said about this particular fruit in this particular season. Uh-huh. I'm going somewhere, y'all. In this season, you got a lot of folks that are talking about this particular fruit. You got a lot of folks that are saying, we need you to be patient. In the last couple of weeks, we've heard a lot of folks talk about, we need you to be patient. 
uh, we've been asked by a whole lot of folks to be patient around two particular things, the election and the pandemic. We need you to be patient. In my mind, I'm thinking if somebody asks me to be patient one more time, I'm going to lose my patience. We need, <laughs> we need you to be patient. And, and, and what's happening is um, we're being asked by folks in the media to be patient since the night of the election. Two weeks ago, Tuesday, even before the election day ended, they already told us we're going to need y'all to be patient. And every day when you watch the news thereafter, up until last Saturday, they kept saying the same doggone thing. We're going to need you to be patient. And then every time President-elect potential came to the podium, grabbed the mic. He said to the folks, uh, we're going to need for you to be patient. Now that the election is over and we know what the Electoral College has decided and we've seen the outcomes plastered on the television and I promise this time, I wasn't going to say nothing about the current guy. But now that we've seen all of these results, still we're having people say to us, we're going to need you to be patient. And then I get on my phone these messages from the mayor and the governor every day, bud. And the mayor is telling us, Chicago citizens, uh, we're going to need you to be patient. The governor of the state is asking for folks in Illinois, uh, we're going to need you to be patient. And then we heard some fairly good news this week from Big Pharma, Pfizer, and Johnson & Johnson, who said, you know what, there's a chance, y'all, that we may have a vaccine, but, uh... We're gonna need you to be patient. And the reason why I thought it was so important for us to preach this message is because the first thing is I'm not sure that they know what they're really asking us. And even if they don't know what they're really asking us, I wanted to make sure that you knew what they're really asking us. And I'm not even suggesting that they shouldn't be asking us to be patient. No, we need to be patient. I heard somebody say it this way on the radio this morning when I was on the way in, listening to Daryl Denard and one of the folks that was on media, media mogul in the city of Chicago, she said it this way, uh, that even if we don't respect the virus, we need to know that the virus doesn't respect us. No, virus doesn't care who you are. Virus doesn't care how much money you got. Virus doesn't care how much education you got. Virus doesn't care how much medicine you got. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And the virus is going to take the virus's sweet time. And so we have to be patient. It's appropriate for them to ask us to be patient. I'm just suggesting that they really don't realize what they're asking us when they ask us to be patient. Because here's the thing, what they're asking us is for fruit to be produced within us. That's what they're asking us. 
because patience is a fruit. I need y'all to hear what I'm saying. Patience, guys, is not a gift. A gift is given to us. Anytime we're asking for or desirous of patience manifesting, it ain't going to just show up. It takes some work. And it comes with some challenges. See, to produce this particular kind of fruit, there are two main ingredients. Dr. Samson would say, wake up and write it down. The first one is problems, and the second one is waiting. Anytime you talk about patience, two things are on the line, problems and waiting. Whenever you pray for or ask for, for patience, you know what you're really doing? You're inviting some problems and some waiting to your address. That's what you're doing. Uh-huh. Y'all just missed what I said. Um, and, and, and when the problems come, they're going to always arrive before the waiting does. Are y'all following me? Yeah, problems precede the waiting. And when the waiting arrives, all the waiting is there for is to help you to wait till your problem gets fixed. So in essence, that's what they're asking us to do, bud. They're asking us to acquire some problems and then to wait until they get fixed. I'm almost done. I promise you I'm almost done. So I started trying to make sense of this. So I went to different translations of the Bible. And what I noticed was in the Amplified Bible, the same verse, verse 22, this is how it reads. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit, and then it puts in parentheses the result of his presence within us. So the Amplified Bible is trying to help us to understand that any time the fruit of the Spirit manifests in us, all that is is God's presence within. Oh, my God. That was reason to shout right there. See, the only reason why God wants to produce fruit in us is to produce a little bit of the manifestation of himself on the inside of you. Are y'all hearing what I'm trying to get you to understand? So that whatever you experience in life, Richard, in the form of problems, challenges, or whatever the situation or circumstance is, he's trying to put something in you that allows you to handle it while you're going through it. So that fruit is a result of God's presence within you, be it love, be it joy, or be it patience. Now, when it gets to patience, this is what it says in the Amplified Bible in parentheses. It says, patience is not the ability to wait, but it's how you act while you wait. I need y'all to, to wake up and write that down. It ain't the ability to wait, it's how you act while you're waiting. So God isn't just trying to make you wait. He's trying to make you wait with the right attitude. <laughs> oh, my God. He's trying to make you wait with the right spirit. In other words, you can't wait with a bad attitude. You can't wait mad. You can't wait ugly. You can't wait mean mugging. You can't wait nasty. You can't wait evil. You got to wait. You got to wait sweet. <laughs> but then the last part, last part of the text is the most critical, and I'm getting ready to go to my seat. Adrian, you can come on up. Thank you. That's right. Start moving this way. Richard, start moving this way. That's it. Jason, yep, yep. 
Larry, yeah, because I'm done. <laughs> Trina, get ready, because I'm done. Stop playing that I'm done music. Verse 23, verse 23, verse 23. I need y'all to go to the Message Bible. If you got an iPhone, if you got an iPhone, go to the Message Bible. If you got an iPhone, if you got a droid, get there however you can. <laughs> Message Bible, verse 23. I love this, bud. This is what it says. Right at the bottom of the verse, and I never really... Mike, I never used to pay attention to the bottom of the verse. I just, re like most people, you know, we read the fruits of the Spirit. We read all nine of those, and then we stop at the fruits of the Spirit. But we never pick up the last part of verse 23. And the last part of verse 23 is the most critical part, especially in this season, while... The fruit is being produced because this is what it says in the message Bible legalism is helpless in bringing this about legalism is helpless in bringing this about what it would help me to realize is that these folks that are asking us to be patient don't have any idea what they're asking us. And what they don't realize is that there's nothing that they can do to help us to be patient. The only thing they can do is ask of us to be patient. But the president can't produce fruit. I'm almost done. The governor, he can't produce no fruit. I tell you, I'm almost done. The mayor, she can't produce no fruit. Big Pharma, even if Big Pharma comes up with a virus or, or a, a vaccine for the virus, Big Pharma cannot produce fruit. The only somebody that can produce fruit is God. And I want to suggest to you that the reason, at least one reason, why we had to wait on the election and why we have to wait for this virus to go away is because God is making fruit, y'all. That's why I started. I tried to help us to understand that all God is doing in this period, in this season, right here, he's just making fruit. And if you're an agriculturalist or a weekend farmer, you know, a garden on your own. Because when I was a kid, sometimes we would try to help folks to understand that watermelon seeds wasn't just in there for nuisance. You eat watermelon, you get all them seeds, wonder all them seeds, what are all them seeds for? Why, why watermelon got all them seeds? And then somebody who was wise would try to teach a kid to take the seeds and put them in the ground. And when you put those seeds in the ground, if you wait it long enough, that watermelon seed was going to produce some more watermelons. And that's true about anything that represents fruit. But here's the thing. You can't stand and watch fruit grow. <laughs> because it takes time. You can't set your watch to the production of fruit because it takes time. And you can't produce fruit. Even if you take the seeds and put them in the ground, you can't make what comes out of the fruit. You can nurture it. You can participate in the production, but only God has the ability 
to produce fruit. And I don't know what he's producing in you, but I can tell you that in this period, in each of us, as we're waiting, and he's got us waiting, what he's doing is he's, he's making some fruit. That's what we all have to shout about. I don't know what your fruit is. The Bible talks about five types, seven types, 12 types, 16 types. No, there's a whole lot more fruit than that. God's got a whole lot of different kind of fruit. And I don't know what his fruit is for you. But through patience, through your problems, and while you're waiting with the right attitude, he's got great things in store for you. And then James said it this way. James said this in his first chapter. That let patience have its perfect work. Because when it does, then you'll become perfect, complete, wanting absolutely, positively, nothing. Change me, oh God. Make me more like you. Change me, oh God. Wash me through and through. Just create. A clean, clean heart so that I may worship you. Change, change, change me, oh God. Make me more. Wash me through and through. Just create, train in me a clean heart. Oh, now that I. I need you to change me from the inside out. Jesus, change me like only you can, Jesus. Change me. You know my heart, Jesus. Change me. I need you to do it again for me, Lord.
song, what a wonderful song. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Katrina, for blessing us. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. So God must be making fruit during this season. Praise God. We want to thank and praise God for a pastor giving us a wonderful message. Glory to God. I often say that we are blessed and highly favored and flavored with the fruits from the Holy Ghost, with the fruits from the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit produces fruit, praise God. So during this season, I just got a message that God wants us to act like we got a little flavor, praise God. He, he wants us to make sure that we practice long suffering, that we practice patience, praise God. He, he wants us to act like we got some swag. Don't miss this, y'all. Don't miss this, y'all. Swag, the young folk told me that it was uh, someone who admires God. We got we to gotta act like we admire God during this season. Hallelujah. God has set us aside as holy. Thank you, Pastor, for that phenomenal message. Praise God. The fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. It produces something. It, I mean, the Holy Ghost produces the fruit. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We thank and praise God. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. Glory to God. Amen. If you want to be a part of Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church, glory to God. Go in that um, inbox. Uh, DM us. Let us know you want to be a part of Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church. And I promise you that we will definitely get in contact with you. We will call you. Praise God. I'm talking about ASAP. ASAP. Amen. That word was rich, y'all. I got so many notes on that word. That word was rich. Glory to God. You know, I just thank and praise God because he, he never stops blessing us. He never stops giving us a fresh rhema word. Praise God if we would just open up our ears and to listen and receive what thus said the Lord. Amen. Listen, Shallow Missionary Baptist Church, we're still uh, practicing ministry here praise God even during the pandemic on Thursday nights glory to God we have our seniors amen if you don't if you don't mind do a drive-by on us sometime call in sometime you can listen if you don't want to just listen just for the entire duration listen maybe at the beginning we sometimes we have individuals blessing our seniors praise God with song with song and uh, we have a phenomenal time. Praise God. We're in the uh, book of Genesis. Glory to God. And then on Wednesday nights, we have uh, Hot Topics. Pastor teaches a phenomenal class on, uh, out of the book, uh, AHA. And it focuses in on AHA moments. Amen. And then on Tuesday nights, Pastor Lance uh, teaches the young adult ministry. Glory to God. He, he's doing a wonderful job um, with them. Tell your young folk to come on in and tune in. And praise God and give uh, the youth, the young minister, uh, young adult ministry, I'm sorry, some support. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. And again, Pastor kind of alluded to what we're doing uh, with the um, with the um, I lost my train of thought <laughs> with the um, job readiness. I'm sorry, job readiness. And then the PPE. Glory to God. Um, we're doing a phenomenal job. I just thank God for just giving us the ability to continue to reach out to the community. And please don't forget, don't forget to give. Don't forget to give. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shake it together, running over. And with the same measure you give, God will give it back to you. Praise God. You can give through a cash app. You can give through GiveLify. It should be going across the screen right now. Praise God. We've had a wonderful time in the Lord. Praise the Lord. A wonderful time in the Lord. And we just want you to go home thinking about the fact that God must be producing fruit. Praise God. He must be producing fruit. Keep your eyes and your ears open during this season. Praise God. Listen to what thus said the Lord. Listen to what he said. Continue to study to show yourselves approved to be workers who need not be ashamed to rightly divide the word of truth. Get closer and closer and closer to God even during this season. Praise God. We love you. We thank you for tuning in. God bless you. God bless you. In Jesus name. Amen. And it's a new day, a fresh anointing is flowing my way. It's a season of power and prosperity. It's a new Adrian. It's a season of power. It's a season of power and prosperity. Yeah. It's a new season coming to me. Break it down, guys. Listen, I need y'all to praise the Lord again for Trina being with us this morning. Oh my God. Promise me you're coming back to see us soon, girl. Praise God. We appreciate you so much. Got to see you sooner than later. Sooner than later. Uh, listen, one other thing I wanted to share with you. Beginning next week, we're calling this Membership Sunday. So we're looking for you and everybody who's affiliated with our church to be with us next week on Facebook Live. We want as many of our members to be with us on Facebook Live. I think we got over 100 today. My desire is for us to get up to 250 at least, y'all. We got that many members. And so here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do. I don't even want you to get dressed for worship. I want you to wear your pajamas next week. Yep, I want you, listen, I want you to wear your pajamas and come to church. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wear my pajamas and come to church next week. But I said, no, Pastor, don't wear your, no, listen. Listen, y'all, I'm going to wear my pajamas to church next week. So I want you to wear, listen, I want y'all to wear your pajamas next week and send me some pictures. Yep, that's what we're doing. I'm talking about with your sliders and everything, y'all. Yep, listen, you can even keep your hair rolled up. That's what I want you to do next week. I'm killing my brother right now. Listen, listen, I want you to keep, I want you to keep your bandana on your head next week and send me some pictures. You don't even have to get dressed. You don't have to come to church. Just be at church. All right? And then, listen, what we're going to try to do is put into our electronic system a way for you to fill out the registration so that we can make sure that you're still with us all through this year going into next year. This week and next week, we're calling these Membership Sundays, both Sundays. And you remember on the fifth Sunday, we got Pastor Chris Hill, who's going to be with us, and he can't wait. He's already fired up and primed to be with us on the fifth Sunday. 
So we're looking for you to be with us, all right? Let's receive the benediction. Grace, mercy, and truth, the love of God, and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Rest, rule, and abide with these, your people, now, henceforth, and forever. Everybody said amen. God bless you. See you next week.